Uh, so the first poem that I'll read is entitled Stormlord's Wrath from my book of poems, Total Party Kill. Um, uh, Stormlord's Wrath, yeah. And uh, this is a, a poem essentially about shame and romantic love. Um, and uh, boy, do they ever go hand in hand. Hey, uh, okay, Stormlord's Wrath. On ice spire peak where the high road cuts through foothills to the sword mountains that arc like a boomerang beside the detox clinic to which I've returned more times than there are fermented berries in the April trees, past a brackish mirror that's ringed in knotweed and spiny cattails bending amid the crags a town abandoned and in the town her empty tower crept with ivy. After the rain that fell the night, a storm swept in above the peaks and stung our heads with sound and hail, and we beheld the face of God formed in its thunderhead. I put my hand between her thighs, which yawned and formed a goblet's mouth, felt her hip bone jut and thrust while she was holding up her skirt. My sponsor says he isn't sure that sex is not my drug of choice. Should she step out and lean against the rail and see me on the ground where I'm incapable of getting up without a gulp of crisp Chablis that dews the bottle's lip with jewels as glossy as the spiderwebs that span the branches of the mountain ash? Should she step out of an archway like a myth and lean against the rail and see? Um, and this second poem that I'll read from my forthcoming collection, or it's already out, uh, Total Party Kill, a collection of poems about um, recovery from addiction through the vernacular of Dungeons and Dragons. This next poem is about nepotism in the arts and um, the appropriation of working class culture and addiction narratives by middle class artists to give themselves street cred. Um, and uh, this poem is dedicated to St. John's painter, Greg Bennett, or Gregory Bennett. Um, it's called The Ruins of Undermountain. Of course, of course, the famous Lightfoot halfling with his trademark liar, who seems to like to dress like Ringo Starr off Sergeant Peppers, is crowned the Bard of Waterdeep. His father was the open lord for 40 years, which no one seems to mention, but we know how these things go. Plus the songs he sings, the funny tales he tells were stolen from some folk I know who broke their bones down in the forge or died with a hammer in their hands. What do we say to those outside the city walls without a nib for bread or mead when they hear the riotous applause from the highest windows of the castle's tower? We'd see him here in the field ward beyond the gates where the refugees from all the wars, class and otherwise, had settled because they couldn't pay the city's taxes and had nowhere else to go. We'd see him so artfully disheveled, caked in drying mud, the studded leather armor that had never tasted steel, and we'd roll our eyes so hard as to sound the clapper and the bell, the watchmen ring when they spot a horde of orcs on the horizon. But the orcs have never bothered us. They only ever need a place to stay and are, in fact, more like us than those behind the Merlins and the Crenels. Drunk and picking fights, begging for a blackened eye to show soft-handed princes back at court, the ladies for whom that title is still a compliment. He even went so far as to live here for a while, for no other reason than to say he had. To those of us whose most practiced expertise lay in heavy drinking, it was a joke. But then again, like all of us, I'm sure he has his troubles, the least of which is that he's three feet tall. Thank you.